treetops tutorial and let's get right into it right off the bat trademark you can do a little trick right here that i actually don't do in this run where you can flame charge the little guy early now take a look at this little guy right here this guy if you curve your flame charge into him you could also hit this other you could hit this other guy to the left over here with your flame so that's a cool little strat you could do i don't do it here it's a little safer to not go for it just so that you don't get the the flame body block but you know it's an option for you now for 120 percent, you just got to clear out these guys now if you go quick enough here these two guys will be asleep still um but if you don't go quick enough they'll get woken up by the green guy um that passes kind of by that earlier room right there um and if they do get woken up that actually works out because uh going back a little bit if they do get woken up it works out nicely because what will happen is uh this guy will be kind of more towards where spyro's standing right here so you'll be able to get an easier charge into flame charge fade back uh that way but you can still do the same strat with them in this position it's a little more awkward you see i go for the charge into the flame charge look at that fucking smiley face right there beautiful uh big cock Hit this guy. <laughs> you see, I was trying to jump right there. Nothing too notable here. Just uh, keep... Oh, now here's where things get notable. Now check this out. So this part right here, there's two monkeys around the corner right here. You can see there's this little guy poking his head out. Uh, in order to get him to poke his head out, you actually have to come a little wide on this corner right here. If you go just like... If you say you come up here and you jump as like... You cut the line as tight as you can here. Like just go straight right as hard as you can. Um, that guy to the right won't walk out as much. Um, this is like a common thing with these monkeys. Also in Metalhead, they kind of do that. You can kind of manipulate where they walk based on your approach. Uh, and this is kind of one of those scenarios where to kind of go a little wide coming towards them. Flame charging where possible. The thing with this monkey, and you can see right here that uh, he can body block you kind of easily. So just be aware that he will get in your way. Um, one strategy you could do to get around this is when you flame charge him, you could do a full hop. So that way you can flame above the monkey. But alternatively, when you hit this uh, first monkey, you could aim him off to the right a little bit. So that way he goes past the wall and not into it where he would body block you. So he, so he went into the wall right there. So he caused problems for me. Flame charge in these boxes. Double flame charge right here. And with double flame charges on these boxes, just in general with fa with a uh, fan chest, you want to kind of flame charge them off to the side. So that's why I aim directly in the middle between these two because that gets them nicely to the side. Getting up over this way. Now these, this actually, this little spot right here, this little movement just going from here to up to those metal chests is uh, deceptively hard actually. Um, if you try to do a charging jump off of this uh, little part, it works fine, but um, you do get skitter jumps on this particular ledge. So what can happen is you'll accidentally skitter jump and then fall down to the left right here. Um, also, um, they're just really easy to bonk on. And uh, yeah, you just want to be a little careful with these stairs. That's my only, that's just a little precaution I just want to say after having fucked them up many times. That's why you can see I do the charging jump before reaching this little ledge right here. So that way I don't get fucked up by the skitter jumps. Take your time. Take your time. With this dragon, you have to touch him. Uh, well, you want to touch him somewhere further on this side. If you can get around to that end, that's ideal. But hitting him just on this polygon, or at least on this little point right here, is where you want to go. Now you see, I try to get around him right there. Just save a couple moments on the animation. Now, this supercharge ramp, I discussed it a little bit in my uh, supercharge video. But for this particular uh, section in 120%, uh, you don't need max speed in order to get to this area right here. Uh, we don't want to jump if we don't want to jump off the end of supercharged ramps if we don't have to. So in this case, I just did a charging jump onto the ramp, which gets me most of the speed that I need, more than enough for the sake of this non-jump off of the end right here. If you remember, if you jump off the end of a supercharged ramp um, when you don't need to, you're wasting a second or two of mid-air hang time. Definitely got to go for those two uh, fan chests. Now look at this little strategy right here. Now that this strat is definitely one that you don't see from a lot of players, but I really like it, especially if you're going a little slower. It's easier to to maintain. That's why you may not want the maximum maximum speed off the supercharge ramp. Just enough to get again, just enough to get to this uh, island without having to jump to it. Go through this. Now, if you miss the big monkey, that's not a big deal. Um, what'll happen sometimes actually is the first 
fan chest will actually uh, break and hit this guy. So you could try to aim the first fan chest so that you're like kind of straight on, kind of uh, facing towards him when you hit it. I don't really bother. I focus more on the lines going into this monkey right here. Now, as a safer strat, if you don't want to end on the wall right here and do the quick kill on this guy, you can see I barely have enough time to hit him before he hits me with the bananas. So if you want to be a little safer about it, what you can opt to do, and this is like the old strat, is you could go hit this monkey and then go around the outer edge of this pylon, kind of go around this way and come back around um, and then that way you'll be able to bait the guy's uh, bananas uh, off to the right uh, and they won't hit you and you'll be able to have plenty of time to flame charge them. But I like this strategy. It's obviously cool. It's kind of like a little uh, Wild West duel, I like to call it. Me versus the bananas. Who will win? Okay, now there's a couple. Take a look at this. Boom. Now with this uh, section right here, there's a couple strats you can do. Um, you can, of course, just go off the top of this ramp right here um, and avoid the two spring chests. The reason we go off to the side is in order to hit these two spring chests without having to turn around and flame and jump. But uh, you could also go off the other side of this ramp. You could go off the left side over here. And then what that'll allow you to do, see how I go off to the right? I have to curve right to left and then back to the right to hit this box. Ideally, um, and you'll see this in Saboom's runs, um, and I think Chris goes for this too sometimes, is... Um, Ideally, you go off to the left right here, and then that way you're zigzagging you're zigzagging left to right. Uh, you go through these boxes to the right and then to the left, so that way you can collect the gems. I'll be showing that strategy right uh, over here on the screen so you guys can see what that looks like. But yeah, with this strategy that I do, it's a little bit easier with the gems. Um, a little bit easier to... Uh, it's a little bit harder to see what you're doing when you do the other strat, so that's why I prefer that one, even if it does waste a second or two. Now this little part of the ramp right here, this is the part I talk about in my supercharged tutorial video. You don't, you don't have to do a jump into this ramp. If you do a jump into this ramp, you can get extra height, which means being higher here, you could get like way up into the here in the sky, and then that gives you less time of uh, gliding before you can charge. So. Um, I'm of the opinion that it's a little faster to do a, a short hop charge into that ramp uh, so that way you can get the little bit of extra speed in order to have extra height so that way you can charge out of your glide more quickly but you know we're talking the difference of a second or two no matter what strat you do. The real key with this ramp is that you uh, press X as late as possible. If you're like a newer player you're having trouble with this uh, jump right here make sure you go off this top corner right here. Don't try to cut left too hard because you're going to you're gonna waste height because of that as you can see the ramp is uh, shorter up on this side. Go all the way up to this corner right here. You can see I even cut it off a little bit to the left right there. But go up to this corner and then press X later than you think. Look at where I press. Look at the fucking input viewer down here. Look at where I press X. Boom. I don't press X until I'm like literally off the ramp. And that's because Spyro extends the ledge of whatever he's using if he has a lot of momentum. So if he's running, if you're charging off a ledge and you press X later than you think, you will usually still get your still get the jump. But it varies in terms of leniency from the ledge to ledge. But if you're supercharging, then uh, you can definitely extend the ledge of, of supercharge ramps um, when you need to do uh, difficult jumps like that. So just remember to press X later than usual. Now, at this spot right here, I always mess this up, and I always go into this spot right here. Really, the spot you want to touch this dragon on is going to be right on this polygon to the left of where I am right now. There's our boy Jed. Turn left coming out of this. Normally I'll normally I'll try to jump charge. If I need to make like a quick turn like right out of this, I'll usually jump charge. But because there's a bunch of gems right here, I'll just I just do quick turn and then charge. And then jump. Be careful of that purple, because it's in a weird spot. This purple box. So if you try to go too fast, you're usually gonna like jump a little bit too far to the left and miss it. So be extra deliberate with that box. If you're going quick at this section, then this guy will be right here. If you're going a little slow, he'll be further up in his cycle. So, um, just kind of have an idea of how quickly you're going just on this island, um, or just up to this point, so that you can kind of be aware of where the green guy is going to be, and just try to flame charge him and fade back. You see, I tried to flame charge fade back right there, but I failed it. So rather than being hasty, I was like, whoop, and then, you know, pick up the gem. Don't want to, that's a perfect example of don't be too hasty, and your run will live. If I was being too hasty there, I would have accidentally charged into the, uh, wind tunnel. Now, I messed up this little strat right here, but what you can do... Coming down this way, you can go through all of these boxes in one charge. You do have to kind of push up. You have to charge up against this uh, hut, um, and it'll push you in such a way where you can get down there. You just got to be careful with these metal, or pardon me, these uh, spiky wooden 
spikes, uh, their hitbox can be a little bit uh, bigger than you'd think. So um, don't try to get too close to them, really. I mean, it's better that you go, that you kind of try to uh, kind of glide, uh, push up against this hut right here. So that way uh, you don't get fucked over by these spikes. And hey, if you miss one of those boxes like I did, whatever. What's the big deal? Easy recovery. These gem ah, see that how I missed that red right there? That's one that'll commonly get missed. That's a very common gem to miss right there. So pay extra attention during that section. You can see I was really looking closely right there, and that's the only reason I caught that red. If I wasn't paying super close attention right there, that red would have killed my run. Getting these boxes first. Now coming off to the right right here, what some people will do is they'll actually uh, get a double kill on these guys. Uh, the way you can do that is by taking a wider uh, charging jump right here. If you go, if you kind of go off to the straight and then to the right, then the red guy won't see you as easily. But in my opinion, this loses time. I mean, not just in this movement right here, but you can just charge through the red guy later rather than quick killing him now and waiting for his gem as well as this blue. So I'm of the opinion that waiting for him, saving him for later is faster. Again, by like a second or two, right? Shout out to the boy Rotis. He's the chicken down there. Uh, in this little spot right here, this part isn't really too tough. You just got to be careful. If you're going fast, what can happen um, is, see how I, look at that red guy. If I was going a little faster, I would have bonked into that red guy. So that's a thing that can happen. Shout out to Rotis. You can, you can jump up those last two stairs. <laughs> I didn't know that for years of, of running this game. You can jump up that last extra one. I With that uh, extra jump right there, it's really easy to bonk on these stairs. Especially considering the angles that you have trying to do these jumps. So aim to the left here, I say. Sometimes you can even jump off to the left and then curve it into the right. And that uh, makes it easier as well. Similar to like a spin jump, but it's like a half spin jump almost. without spin A spinless spin jump, you could say. But like a kind of fade out then in. That helps with some of those tougher jumps up to the ledges. You can get lucky right here with these two spring boxes and... If you turn in, what helps you get lucky with them is if you kind of aim to the outer part and then turn it in really hard. Um, so see how I'm like already on the inside part of this box? That kind of is, I almost got it even. I mean, it's it's really something that you can't really control that well, but um, the idea is that you're getting Spyro to get pushed down as hard as possible by this wall. So if you, it is possible to supercharge through those two, through those two boxes, but if you miss them, it's not it's not a big deal. It's not really something that I've been able to control very well in my own gameplay. I I really like um, this room in general. Um, gives a lot of people trouble, especially this big guy right here. So say you have to flame this last box right here. You want to you want to like flame, but for me, what I like to do is flame out of the air, but also fade back a glide. And I look really closely at my movement here. I'm gonna slow mo this. Boom, and look at that fade. You see that little fade back right there? I'm pulling back on the joystick in order to get that animation, right? So that helps me be in a good spot to grab the blue and then hit these gems in a nice line. Nice double hit with the flame. With this ramp, uh, you could do a number of different options, but what I like to do, and this is just for me, is I like to jump and then get the double jump. Because when Spyro is above supercharge ramps um, and you jump out of a full hop or you charge out of a full hop, uh, it, it does the double jump sort of mechanic where Spyro gets a little extra height. That has to do with the way supercharge ramps adjust Spyro's properties when you're above them. Check out my supercharge tutorial for more um, uh, insight into that. But essentially, I like to jump over this do the little double jump and then land on sort of like the mellow angle where it starts to kind of go down a little bit. I find that when you like land, you don't need to land like here on this on this supercharge ramp. It doesn't really add that much extra speed. And you truth be told, you don't really want the most speed possible here. You want just enough to make like that's perfect speed right there. Just enough in order to cut a straight line into these three um, metal boxes. And keep in mind, I have not jumped off of any of these supercharge ramps. I have jumped onto some of them in order to have the right amount of speed, but I've not jumped off of any of them. This is Stone Knot Skip right here. Um, I covered this in a little bit of detail in my supercharge video as well, so if you're curious about any of these uh, these tricks right here, please check that out, or if you're having trouble with supercharge in general. But here it's the same thing. You wanna press X later than you think. In fact, I pressed X a little earlier here, but you see, I didn't press X when I was on the ground. I pressed, I waited till I was off the ground before I pressed X here. 
Um, also, if you turn in too hard, if you like, if you go straight up this thing, you will bonk. Like if you hit this part of it, you're gonna bonk. So you have to go around the outer part, kind of 45 degrees, in order to get that. Let's just watch that whole supercharger section one more time because I've been pausing a lot. Let's just kind of see it real quick in slow mo right here. This section, I charge up, and you could do a charging jump here, but I like to full hop charge. Get the double jump so that you're coming onto the ramp with a good amount of speed, landing on a mellow part of the ramp, coming straight off, not jumping off the ramp. We're going straight through these, and then I cut it in, and then I, ooh, and then beautifully you cut it in. You don't want to be too wacky with your turns there on that, on that section back here. Um, part of what makes this trick consistent for me is really having a, um, a consistent way of turning here. So when I hit these two boxes, I'll usually tap to the right to hit this box, and then I'll adjust whatever needs to be adjusted. So since I was turning late here, I just held right um, late in order to get the full adjustment and then crank it back to the left. Look at my analog stick one more time during this section. I mean, this this is really what makes the trick consistent is this little uh, section right here. Hold on, watch the fucking analog. Boom, right, and then boom, left. It's like my stick is all over the place there, right? So coming around and there's that red guy from earlier. You can, and again, you could kill this guy early, but I like to leave him for here. See how there's no time loss to killing him there. And if you do stone knot in a certain way, you can actually uh, hit this box first. Though it is a little dangerous when you're pushing up against the wall super hard during uh, this part of stone knot. Let me go back to it here. When you push up against the wall super hard here in order to say I want to hit this box right here. Um, it's really dangerous because you could bonk into this ledge. So usually I'll just opt to just go for this one just for safety Because uh, then even if I do bonk like sometimes you'll get like cut off by the ledge and bonk against the uh, The fan chest you'll still like land on you'll still bonk on top of the of the of the ground there uh, Whereas if you hold hard right really going for this you're gonna bonk on the side of this and fall off or you're going to like I said earlier you're going to run into this thing right here so uh, it's really dangerous to go for this one early but it is doable um, so yeah and you can see the fan uh, blew up those two boxes come down here and remember to jump into the last couple gems so that way you don't have to wait for them to home in look at that beautiful and jump and I always tend to leave the last two gems for my uh, short hop charge into them. Um, but you could do it with as many as three gems or leave it for one gem. But just try to short hop charge into the last couple gems. And guys, that's it for the treetops tutorial. That's it. Um, definitely check out the supercharge tutorial video if you need more help with this uh, level. But uh, in general, um, fuck monkeys. Uh, they're assholes. <laughs> <laughs> they'd be throwing they'd be sniping bananas at you so d if you need to take them slow i say there's nothing wrong with that um it's better to bait out the monkeys uh bananas uh and wait for them to throw them rather than like go up against them when you know you're, you're gonna get hit uh but in my case with this level i was able to take a really aggressive approach with them and since i practiced it um i didn't have to really wait for any of them or, or bait them out so um with that, that's going to be it for me on this one, and good luck on your 120% learning or uh, anything else, and keep gaming, keep spiroing, as Chloe Gwen would say, and keep on fucking chugging. Cheers. Damn.